Hey Lakers, it's Mr. Reem. Welcome to the Junior Fall Workshop for the class of 2026. Uh, I'm gonna welcome you back to school. Uh, welcome you to the later half of high school. Uh, and often what is time of busy, time of year for, for high school students, a very fun time of year. Uh, a lot of time for growth, for increased uh, responsibilities and opportunities. Um, just tons of things going on that I'm excited to kind of walk through you with. Uh, and also go over with you today. Um, today, when we talk about workshops, what we're gonna be doing is gonna be highlighting three things primarily, three distinct areas in our workshop for this video. Um, number one is I wanna set up an overview uh, about what 11th grade kind of looks like, give you a little bit of tips and tricks about how to navigate that successfully. Um, we're also gonna look broadly at a, at a list or a menu of different post-secondary options because 11th grade really starts to transition into this idea of what am I doing next and, and am I prepared and what do I still need to do to maybe make it to that next level that I'm aiming for and starting to define that more clearly. Um, and then the final area is just highlighting some, some key resources and tools um, and just highlighting what those things can do for you depending on what your goals and next steps actually are. Um, so before we do that, though, I want to dive into just a couple nuts and bolts, mainly as reminders. Um, if you're new to, to North Tall High School, um, just some introductory pieces that will help us navigate this school year successfully. Um, and just a reminder as we dive in today. So once again, my name is Mr. Reem. If I haven't met you uh, or you're new to our school, that's my name. <laughs> and that's who you can, that's who you can ask for if you need some help. Um, I am the school counselor that will be following the class of 2026 throughout the remainder of high school, so these next two school years. Uh, and I'm excited to transition. We started this cohort change, uh, started last year, and so I'm excited to follow the last year 10th graders into this year's juniors and then into next year's senior uh, application and senior fund process. Uh, so just a reminder about that. We do run on appointments, which we'll touch on in a little bit, uh, but I'm definitely open and, and willing and, and wanting to engage uh, in questions and and Please don't like think that there's any dumb questions. Uh, many of you, this is maybe your first time through high school. Maybe you had another student before your, your current junior that has gone through high school, but every year it looks different and every child is different. So, so don't feel like there's any dumb questions. And, and things have been in a state of flux for the last couple of years post COVID as things start to kind of retransition back to what we would call normal or the new normal. And so don't, don't think that there's any dumb questions um, and we'll highlight a couple areas that maybe you can act, look through initially to maybe see if there's an answer that you can find there. But please don't hesitate to reach out uh, if you're stuck. A couple other things that I just want to highlight, um, and this is pretty uh, time sensitive. If you're watching this later on in junior year for some reason, just note that some of these dates might have already passed. Uh, but I just want to highlight this in the early fall time frame for the junior year. Um, and some of these are, are kind of annual or biannual events. So it's something that you just want to kind of be aware of, uh, but the first one is our college admissions case study. This one is a biannual, not twice a year, but every two years uh, event that we host uh, with kind of like the partnership of several private schools, Truckee High School, we're inviting in Klein High School, and we have about seven or eight different college reps. Um, you can see some of the, the universities that'll be represented on the screen down below, but uh, several reps will come and you actually jump on the opposite side of the desk in terms of the college admissions. Uh, it's really, really a unique look at what the process kind of feels like, both from a student standpoint, but also from the reviewer standpoint. And a lot of like aha moments come from this. You get to uh, join a small group of other students and parents from our school, from other schools around the area. And you actually go through and act like an admissions team or committee looking at the information from three, I believe, three fake students who have uh, completed a common application and trying to help identify which students you're going to admit and maybe waitlist or deny based on your institutional priorities. So it's a really cool opportunity. That's on October 5th. There is a registration requirement that you do have to pre-register for this and there are limited seats available. So uh, if you have your phone, you can pause this, you can uh, scan the QR code that's on the screen. This is also linked on our newsletters and websites and things like that as well and has been sent out uh, via 
communications from the school. But um, if you wanted to snap a, a kind of a photo of that QR code on the screen, that will take you to the registration site as well. Um, registration will close about two or three days prior to that date. So just make sure that you're registering early. Um, and like I said, there are limited seats available. So just hope you can join us on that date. It is open for high school students as well as parents of high schoolers. So uh, it's, it's a meaningful event for both students and the adults. The next one is two things that we're not organizing as a school here, but it's two things that our North Tahoe High School students are definitely invited to attend that are coming up uh, in October. October is a big month for some of these things, primarily because a lot of related things uh, for college in particular with four-year colleges is this is their visits time. So their admissions officers are usually out kind of on the streets, basically drumming up uh, applicants and sharing information about their schools right now. And then as the, the fall turns into winter, they're back in their offices or, or in their regional locations, uh, reviewing applications and reading essays and things like that. So there are two things. I'm going to leave them on, on the screen for a second. Please take a look at them. Um, one is a college fair, which is put on by Washoe County. So it's going to be down in Reno at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. That's on October 20th. Um, so you can make that uh, date available if you'd like to go check out that. And then there's a Chucky High School puts on a college and career fair that has colleges from all over the area as well as all levels of education. So anything from UCs and CSUs, private states, in states, out of states, and as well as like vocational and junior college um, representatives are usually there as well. Um, so you can see the information there. They also are hosting an, a UC, a University of California application workshop. That's primarily geared towards seniors. Um, so it's not something that I would necessarily encourage uh, current juniors to go to um, maybe until the, the following year when it's the year kind of cycle because things do change with some of the applications and, and but the college career fair definitely super applicable to your grade level. I mentioned things like appointments so uh, I am ba I bounce all over the place. Uh, I'm a wearer of many hats and so uh, if you ever want to get my attention and make sure that you have it, um, booking an appointment is probably the, the best way to do that. So there are appointment links on our school counseling website uh, that you can access a little bit later towards the end in our resources. I'll give you a link to that, um, but it's located under the programs menu on the North Tower High School homepage. Um, but that has a lot of resources available as well as a link to our different appointments. Um, and so if you want to make sure that you have 15, 20 minutes with me where my attention is on you and not trying to pop in and just not know, not sure if I'll be available or not, th those appointments are great. They're available for students and families um, or adults. If you want to swing by uh, to meet as a family, if you want to have your students set something up for me, and then there will be a couple other things down the road that we'll talk about too related to appointments. So that's a very helpful thing. I do have a phone. <laughs> um, and so you can leave a voicemail, but I will warn you that my uh, voicemail return time is usually within about a week. Uh, it's usually not right away. Uh, I check it every, I check it as often as I'm able to, um, but I may not be able to reach back out right away. Uh, probably the fastest way to get a hold of me is actually through email. So if you uh, want to email me a question, especially if it's quick and easy, I can respond to you as I'm walking around at lunch or in between meetings or right after a conversation I have with a student while, while another one's coming down, things like that. So I would strongly encourage you to try an email if you're having trouble uh, pinning me down somewhere um, or book an appointment online. The other thing that we're going to highlight here um, is we're doing a new, it's a new-ish new format. Uh, we've historically recorded videos of our workshops um, for pretty much all of our workshops where we can. And um, it's just something that I want to uh, encourage you we're still doing, so we're sharing this information. Um, but we are actually going to not be having an in-person workshop this year. Um, and this is for all the grade levels and many of our meetings that will happen throughout the year. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one is primarily uh, our auditorium is currently out of commission through the fall due to some weather related incidents um, and some need of repair. So we're not able to go in there. That's usually our place where we host our meetings. Um, but secondly is since we've been recording these for many years, um, we've noticed more and more families just taking uh, the route to access the recorded video instead of needing to be at a certain place at a certain time to get the information. And so we just kind of cut out the middleman. We're gonna say, we're gonna do this path. Um, we can also provide a better uh, presentation typically when we do it through kind of a pre-recorded webinar, uh, meaning I can look at you in the camera and it's not a recording of me doing a presentation, it's actually me giving you the presentation. Uh, so, so it's more usable, I feel like, uh, as well as uh, allows us to not have to capitalize on having you in one space and really trying to use our time as much time as we can with even one place, meaning we don't need to spend an hour necessarily on a, on a meeting 
or an hour and a half in some cases, where we can break these things up into smaller digestible chunks and send them out in meaningful ways. Um, and the last thing is we are going to be following up. So in the email that you'll get that accompanies uh, this announcement, you'll see an invite to an in-person kind of Q&A session that will be probably a couple weeks after we send out this this video to give you a chance to watch it. But I know that there's many times people will come up with questions. They have things they wanna know about the content of these videos. Again, you can always send me an email as well, um, but we will have an in-person session where you can drop by. It'll just be about an hour of drop-in availability that will be in a classroom. And if you wanted to come in and, and have some question ans questions answered, that's a great time to do it. Um, so we'll share that date as part of the follow-up when you get this in an email or notice at home. Uh, a couple other things, we'll talk briefly about testing again down the in, in a little bit, uh, you know, the future slide, but um, we are, just a heads up, we are planning to offer um, our current juniors uh, a spring SAT school day uh, later in this school year. Um, we don't have any particular dates at this point yet. We're kind of aiming probably towards March, but it kind of depends on a number of factors, but we are planning on offering that. Uh, one time a year for current juniors and more information will be shared. Um, we don't have tons of details yet to share, but I did want to let you know. Um, we know that students um, historically over the last year or two, if, if, they, if you wanted to take an SAT, have had a little bit of a hard time getting access to seats, having uh, short notice cancellations and things like that. So we wanted to be able to provide this as a support to families navigating the testing landscape. So just stay tuned for that. Um, most likely later on in the, in the fall, as we lead into winter, we'll probably have some more details about particular dates, times, costs, things like that. Um, in addition, uh, if your student is taking an AP exam, which many times many juniors have uh, kind of dove into either last year or have kind of taken on maybe more this year, uh, I do want to just send out a, a reminder. You'll have more information sent your way once kind of rosters have, have settled. Uh, but there is an AP exam registration date that will close on November 13th, and we'll send out more details about how students do that. But they will actually have to register themselves for their May exam. And that is a fall registration deadline. There is no extension of that date. So I do want to make sure that you understand that. And you've heard that many different times. We actually sent out an AP agreement for the classes, and I hope you had a chance to look through it because it's it covers a lot of the important details that are, are help, helping us run an efficient testing uh, program. Uh, it's very complicated, very time consuming, um, and College Board doesn't usually help us a whole lot with that. They actually make it kind of a pain in the butt. However, uh, we want to make sure it's as, as seamless and supportive as we can. So I want to make sure you have all the information in advance. Um, so just make sure that you saw that. If you have any questions before November 13th is the right time to answer those questions about testing and how to sign up and things like that. Um, finally, uh, kind of what the nuts and bolts is, we will be uh, kind of doing some fall junior ILP meetings or individual learning plan meetings. And what these meetings are is uh, if you're interested, it's not a requirement, we, we strongly encourage, but um, we're not gonna track down every single student or family. Um, I will try to do my very best to, I, I would like to try to set myself a goal to, to try to make sure I sit down with each student at minimum to go over some of this information. Uh, to get some, some details on what their plans are, see what the questions or concerns they have. But it's also a really useful thing for families to come in and talk through. So, so you'll get some more information. Um, most likely we'll start these around October uh, and it'll probably last us through probably Thanksgiving or early December. It's usually a, about a two month, two and a half month time frame to kind of have these meetings happen. Um, but it's it's a great opportunity and this, this helps us have a tailored conversation to your own students' goals, whether that's a four-year college, a junior college, trade school, work, uh, military. We want to help make sure that you guys know what the, the, the paths are, what the needs are, what are some of the things that uh, you maybe have questions about and go from there. Okay. So those are the nuts and bolts of kind of what we got going on. Um, we're going to dive in a little bit into kind of this idea of 11th grade and what being a junior actually looks like because uh, junior year does shift quite a bit. Um, and so this is something that I kind of like my super non-scientific research study. Uh, if you don't know me, I, I like technology, I like data, I like information. Uh, when I first started college, I actually was attending as an aerospace engineer. So that's kind of the frame of reference that my brain comes into what is typically kind of the complete opposite perspective that most of my colleagues in education and especially in counseling come in, come in with. And so I have a very different sometimes perspective on things, um, sometimes opinions on things too, for better or for worse. Um, and, you know, but it's something that, that helps me make sense of things is looking at numbers and data, understanding some of the reasons why things maybe are happening. But 
I put together this kind of chart, and I think it's it's pretty telling because when we look at the difference, so the E and U distribution, the effort and undertaking versus their time in school, um, when students are in ninth grade, they kind of start out and they, you know, ninth grade coming in out of eighth grade is usually a step up in terms of expectations. Students have homework. There's maybe more or less rules or different rules they have to, to kind of fall into, um, but they, they, they definitely take a little bit of a step up in academic rigor. Typically in 10th grade, when students transition to 10th grade, they usually step up at it, step it up again, and that's very normal, very typical. Students will take on maybe an, an AP class, they might take on some additional coursework. We also add a history course into their course progression, so 10th grade tends to be a little bit harder. Now, when students get to 11th grade, they typically look like this. Many students will actually hit their kind of like academic really ab academic rigor peak in their 11th grade. And that's that's a great thing. It, it, high school is intended to be uh, progressive in terms of level of expectation and rigor. Uh, and then when they hit 12th grade, usually uh, it's not uncommon that some student, you know, some if not many uh, students will actually step back. You know, they won't necessarily need to take six or seven classes, they might take four. Some students might take three, uh, but it's it, it really kind of they like can tailor some of their coursework a little bit more closely to their maybe their goals, their strengths and weaknesses, some of their outcomes that they're aiming for, and be able to to you know know for a fact we let let students be unscheduled and we let students not need a full load of classes. So many times their academic rigor kind of drops. The problem is is then. Kind of this is what happens in the, se the you know senior year spring is is we call it um, senioritis and they usually kind of drop off the face of the earth um, and so we do want to kind of avoid that we'll talk more about that in the fall of next year but this is kind of the distribution of of kind of an effort and undertaking and one thing I do want to just point out about this is I'm a big proponent of kind of balance in our body it's it would be called homeostasis right so this this thing of too much is not good too little is too good is not good either and kind of this finding this 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 fair balance of like what is the right mixture of things that will help me be the best me okay and so sometimes when we look at 11th grade people talk about how it's probably the most important year um and in many ways it is uh, in many ways 11th grade is probably if i had to classify it as you know if i had to pick a most important year that 11th grade is probably one, one if not the most important year of high school. However, they're all really important. They're just very different. The reason why I think 11th grade is primarily important um, is realistically for students, for example, applying to safe competitive four-year college environments. 11th grade year is really the final year that most students will have for grades and classes, uh, or rather classes with associated grades that they'll then submit in the initial phases of their college applications. Um, Many schools will take what we call mid-year grades in January of their senior year, and uh, if they're making decisions at that point, it'll either confirm or continue through that process um, if they're still on track with what their needs are. But many schools uh, will look at you know, grades up through junior year, see what courses they're taking as seniors, and then make some rough assumptions that you should probably continue on your trajectory, your trajectory of your past performance or improve. Um, and so we'll talk more about that uh, in another session. But um, the other thing that's pretty important about junior year, and it's like this magic aha moment, um, I call it the sophomore summer. The summer between 10th and 11th grade usually has this like really big and really robust, I think, maturity growth, like outlook growth. Students who struggled oftentimes in 9th and 10th grade somehow magically come back and they're like, okay, I get it. Let's do it. And they, they really understand a little bit more about why they're doing school and you know help us work with them to understand how they can engage in a meaningful way to help them reach their targets. So they see this life connection and what happens after high school is meaningful. Um, but going back to that slide of the, the, the distribution, while 11th grade is important, there is kind of, a mis kind of this misconception about how 11th grade has to be the hardest year, and it doesn't. Um, so it doesn't have to be like, I'm going to bury myself with like eight AP classes as a junior, and then I'm going to take it easy as a senior. And that's actually the wrong way to do it. What people want to see and what's most healthy for most students is realistically going to be finding a way to balance some of those two different uh, years and engage appropriately in um, you know, essentially 
finding a way to split those classes between junior and senior year and taking an appropriate load that keeps you engaged throughout those final two years of high school versus trying to pile it on one and then take it easy on the next one. So junior year is super important, okay? Um, a lot of what you're doing right now in junior year is continuing through uh, and then, you know, continuing with your academics, continuing to challenge yourself, continuing to grow as a person and think. Consider what is important to me. Consider what are the things that I really care about or need to know regarding who I am and what do I want. Um, and th that will change. That will uh, develop as you continue to, to think about those things and, and investigate for yourself. But I do want in this... Um, this video, I do want to highlight um, several of the different options. I'm going to call them a menu, uh, but I'm going to do it from kind of this like 30,000 foot kind of zoomed out Google Maps or if you're looking out of an airplane window down at the ground kind of lens. Okay. Whereas we're not diving into any of these particular areas to super deep or maybe even not at all, um, but it's something that I think... Uh, you should have a, an idea of what the landscape kind of looks like in terms of what some of the options look like and it will be presented to you throughout the school year for things you can pursue after high school. So this is my post-grad menu um, and it's not all-encompassing. Okay, so there, this is this is not, uh, it's not prefix. Okay, it's not something that is, you know, this is the only options that are available. I don't, you know, we can customize, you, you can figure out how to, you know, add or subtract, you know, you want beans or no beans or cilantro or whatever, like you can do that. Um, and it's not the end all be all. Okay. But it's just some really good examples of kind of big picture items of where students tend to end up when they graduate high school. So kind of working through this menu from the top left, um, one of the options is going to be going straight to work. Okay. So that's going to be something like going and getting a job right after high school that maybe doesn't require any particular additional training other than maybe a high school diploma. Okay, so that's, uh, there's no cost to go get a job typically, so you don't have to go and invest money um, for, for college or a training program. Uh, so the military or vet volunteer service is another one that's typically considered kind of free, essentially. You're not necessarily investing or paying money to go do this opportunity. Uh, you might be committing to certain things, uh, like with the military, you might sign an enlistment agreement that says this is how many years you're going to be in, um, essentially, uh, but you generally don't have any out-of-pocket costs. <coughs> so that's, those are some other options that students will consider depending on what their goals are. Another option in the, the kind of upper right-hand corner of this menu uh, is the apprenticeship or internship programs. And so an apprenticeship or an internship program is a particular type of training program that's usually geared towards particular types of trades or industries. Um, and we'll show you some examples here in a second. Those costs for pers pursuing and participating in like an internship um, or an apprenticeship program can vary. Okay, depends on what the internship looks like, but it can go anywhere from zero dollars or even getting paid to do it uh, to sometimes they can actually cost money and say, say it be, might be $10,000 a year for like a year or two years or something like that. Um, so there might be an associated cost with it, um, but it will be very highly dependent on the industry and the program that you're pursuing. Kind of the lower left-hand corner is uh, trade technical schooling. So that's going to be um, related to, say, like UTI or the Culinary Institute of America. These are going to be specific trade schools. We call them trade schools uh, where you do require some level of training, license, experience, certificate that you need to go and get specialized kind of instruction in to then go and get the job in that area. So it's not something you can just kind of like walk out of high school and go do. You might need to, to show that you know something related to that field. Um, those programs very typically do have a cost, so very similar to college. Usually it's a very focused program. We're not diving into the specifics again, but they have focused programs where they maybe ditch math and English that don't have any application to your program that you're attending, but they dive in and really get down to the root of the stuff you're going to be doing every single day. So those costs can vary. Uh, many, many times these programs are anywhere from one, you know, even six months potentially to maybe two years um, long, depending on what you're, you're pursuing. But they can range anywhere from about $8,000 a year to up, upwards of $30,000 a year. So, so it can, can be expensive, and if not even just as expensive as, say, a four-year college program. In the middle on the bottom is the two-year community college program. 
a community college. So there's several different ling you know lingos that you'll 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 notice. Two year college, community college, junior college. All those things essentially mean the same thing. Um, so that's kind of like uh, some examples uh, would be like like Tahoe Community College and South Lake or Sierra College are some local ones that you would recognize. Uh, but that's going to be a two-year college program that will help you either receive uh, an education, uh, more well-rounded education, I would say. similar. You can take similar types of programs many times as a trade or technical school at a junior college. But they oftentimes will add on some what we would call like humanities based classes. So some well-rounded courses to help create a well-rounded kind of like thinking person. Um, those can cost anywhere from zero dollars to seventeen thousand dollars or more, um, depending on the school, depending on where you're living. If uh, cost wise, this is a very cost effective way to potentially earn some more higher higher education, but also maybe lead into a four year college program. They offer what's called a transfer pathway from a two-year college you start there and you attend there for about two years and then you can go and transfer into a four-year college to finish up the last two, about two years of school and it might be a very cost-effective way it still costs money but it might cost less money than say attending a four-year college all four years of that school and then finally probably the, the thing that many people are most familiar with is a four-year college or university college and university there's some some details about why they're called certain things but essentially they mean the same thing for most people um, especially at this point in your process, um, those things do um, those things do cost a, quite a bit of money many times. Um, there is financial aid, and there will be a future kind of video like this that talks about uh, some of the basics of financial aid and some things that you need to know about as we get ready to transition and say into a senior year. But these these programs will cost anywhere from twenty thousand dollars to over a hundred thousand dollars a year, depending on what program and school you're looking at. So just be aware, this is a a, a kind of like a, a quick snapshot of what post-secondary options could be available for you or your student. Uh, and, you know, if you're starting to think about these things, starting to dive into the more specific areas and understanding what these mean and the differences, the pros and cons, that's the real big thing we start. I start encouraging, especially juniors, to start having this kind of like adult mindset of like, okay, so I'm not telling you what to do. For example, when a student comes and asks me a question 9.9 .9 times out of 10, I'm not actually giving them the answer. I'm going to tell them this is this is the things that I would think about when you're making that decision because ultimately in two years they're going to be making their own decisions whether we think they're ready or not and so they have to have that practice. Here are a couple option, uh, option examples that I'll show you. So um, kind of we talked about those different areas but a couple examples from like the work categories. So straight to work would be like going into construction, looking at a landscaping, um, you know, doing work within that realm, Help, helping or starting or continuing to run, say, a family business, being an entrepreneur and starting your own, working in the food industry or retail. Those are some straight to work opportunities you might think about. Um, the military and volunteer might be any uh, military branch service. It might be the military reserves. So joining that and having a job and maybe being a reservist could be joining AmeriCorps. It could be like a religious mission or service project or service program that's through a, a religiously affiliated church or, or, or group. Um, it could be something like Peace Corps. Those are all very common kind of military slash volunteer uh, organizations or paths that students might pursue. Uh, the apprenticeships or internships, many times these are some common places where you might find people becoming an apprentice. That might be in the electrical, electric, like the electrician field, being a plumber, working in a more skilled construction trade, uh, surveying is one that many times, maybe a technical skilled work position. Uh, glaziers, like a glass worker, might be someone. Um, so those are some examples. There's many different op options in different fields. Uh, the trade schools in the lower left here. So some additional examples we mentioned is culinary school. Uh, we also mentioned a UTI, Universal Technical Institute, is uh, another pr private school, trade school that offers um, training in automotive technologies. Uh, HVAC is one, dental assisting, medical assisting, cosmetology is a trade school. So all those types of programs actually are falling into the trade or technical school. Two-year colleges, um, we mentioned Sierra College and Lake Tahoe Community College, Santa Barbara City College, Orange Coast College, Cuesta, Cabrillo, all those schools are what we would call two-year junior or community colleges. Um, and then finally, four-year colleges, Cal States would be like Sacramento State or Chico, University of California would be like, uh, like UC Irvine or UC Berkeley, in-state private might be like Santa Clara, out-of-state public might be the University of Utah, out-of-state private might be Harvard, um, and international universities, say Cambridge. Okay, so there's a number of different options um, about what you want to pursue. And to be honest, many times that is actually 
one of the challenges is, you know, making choices and, and narrowing down the options is oftentimes pretty difficult. Um, we talk about some of these different things um, in separate videos, because I will, so, so kind of branching into this. This area in the red, we're gonna have a separate workshop just for these four kind of focuses, which we dive into some of the, the things that students might need to think about, be prepared for, or take next steps on during this year and next year. Because each of these different outcomes, students might think about all the outcomes and make plans around them, but they many times will have different requirements, expectations, and timelines. So I'm gonna break these different sessions up a little bit and be able to focus on some of the more commonalities between um, you know, the work military apprentice and trade schools. Those share a lot of similarities between the four of those. We'll have one about uh, junior college um, and we'll dive into like, what, does it, what, what kind of programs do they offer? Uh, at what levels, how, what's a transfer mean, things like that. And then one specifically about four-year college because those are very particular and specific as well. So over the course of this year, uh, you'll be getting updates and information with access to some of these videos. Um, watch what is appropriate for you or your student. Um, make sure that you actually dive into the ones that you think are gonna be most meaningful. Um, I do encourage to keep doors open. Uh, I think it's important that students consider different opportunities. Sometimes uh, it might not even be within a realm of control that students uh, you know, have to consider other alternatives uh, based on what their original plan was. So for example, like a student might be thinking about, I wanna apply to a four-year college. I strongly encourage every student, you could, have, you could have the perfect grades, I encourage every student to also make sure that you have a two-year college in, in place just in case the finances don't come through or you change your mind. Um, and, and you don't wanna figure some of this out at the tail end of your senior year. You wanna kinda of have a rough plan in place as you come into your senior year. Okay, so keep an eye out for that because that's an important element. So. With all of this conversation, this idea, uh, and you'll hear us talk here, us, me, college representatives, um, employers, things like that, talk about this word called fit. Fit is a really, really useful word, um, but it's very broad. Okay, but the idea of fit is this. So, um, a typical way to look at, say, um, creating a college list or creating a list of opportunities that I'd like to potentially pursue. Um, it could be a career list as well. Typical one would be like, what can I get into? Where are the schools can I, where can I go, right? Or like, where can I make this much money? Um, or like, I'm only really focusing on the schools that I've ever heard of or seen play football on TV. Okay, so, so really limiting the options is, and kind of like starting with particular schools and then finding other options that really match those particular schools is a very typical approach. Whereas the other option, other kind of direction of developing kind of like a plan and a list of, of things is really looking more about me, or rather you, uh, is, is kind of what are my needs um, and wants in a school. Uh, in our ILP meetings that we host, I, that's a big focus. What are the things that you really need? What are the things that you would want? Okay, because there's differences. A need is something that's essential. It's kind of a deal breaker. Whereas a want is essentially like, you know, this would be nice to have. This would be something that like might not ruin a school or a career for me, but like if I can find something to do with that, that would be awesome and make it even more cool. Um, like what will fulfill me and help me reach my intended lifestyle? That might be a great career question. Like, will you know, if I want to make a million dollars a year, here's a hint, don't be a teacher. Okay, so, but you know what? But if I want to feel fulfilled, if I want to give back to my community, support people in their learning process and, 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 and help and be in that helping profession, sometimes you have to understand like making this much may not align with kind of these other elements that help you feel fulfilled as a person. Okay, so you have to kind of wrestle with some of those things as well. Um, do I want to invest in how much? Okay, so, so am I willing to put in time, energy, money, years of my life, things like that? to help me get to this particular place? That's a question that only you can answer, really. Um, what other careers or majors in this area might be of interest, right? So we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Um, and then finally, what what like, what like meets most of my needs and wants? Like, you know, you might li list out these things and then you'll start noticing maybe these careers aren't actually a good fit. Maybe this, this college or this path isn't really, really the right fit for me. And that is 100% okay. Too few students and families actually do that. They many times focused on pedigree, on my my mom and grandma and everybody else went to the school, so I have to go to the school. It's like, no, you don't. 
right? So in, in all reality, we, we don't. Um, and, and we can have conversations around that element, okay? But I also, you know, I'm, I'm a big analogy person. So when we have conversations, you'll probably hear me use analogies quite a bit because I feel like it helps make uh, maybe a less concrete idea into a more concrete kind of like, oh, that makes sense. I can I can understand that. And I, I kind of like liken this idea of fit to this idea of car shopping. Now, parents and, and adults, you probably have gone car shopping before. Students, you may or may not have, but follow along, okay? So if you're thinking about buying a car and you're doing your research, which I hope you do because you're making a large investment, you really want to think about like, okay, so what are the things that I want? What are the things that I really need? Um, what, can I, what can I afford? Can, are there other options that might be better than the one I initially am looking at, okay? These different cars have different um, benefits and cons, right? So, so they have different ways to, to, to look at it. And there might be a trade-off you're willing to make in that circumstance, depending on what the pro and con was, okay? All of the cars that we might look at will likely get us to the same destination. It just changes how we get there potentially, and it might not be the best possible way for you to actually navigate to your end goal, okay? Um, and so that's really kind of how I look at it, because understanding kind of which kind of car you're looking at is, is pretty dependent okay so which depending on who you are it might change which car you go for i mean you could be the sports car maybe you want to like go through this like four plus one kind of ba and ma bachelor's and master's degree and really accelerate and take on as much as you can because you're a driven student you really have this like target to be done in five years instead of six or seven okay um so, so that might be something that is one student. Another student might um, intend to say to go through the transfer path and start at a junior college, um, and they want to load up and like finish their last levels at the junior college. And they, they might be an example of this this like pickup truck. Another person might really have very close family ties, for example, and responsibilities to maybe support their family, and they want to stay closer to home. So maybe they need a minivan, or, or a cargo van, or something like that. And so. These students, when we look at them just from, say, a set of numbers, they might all look the same or very similar. Whereas when we take inside the, in, into context that fit, they might be very, very different. And it doesn't mean that one is better than the other. They just have different needs and purposes, okay, and different ways to get where they're going. And, and the sports car is no better than the van because I can't transport a family in the sports car or I can't load up lumber in the you know, the sports car or, or fit, you know, more than four or five people in the truck than I could in the van. Okay. So understanding that context is really important. These are the thoughts that I actually want students and families to start thinking about now. Okay. We don't start with the end. We don't start with this idea of what do I want to do? We actually want to start with where am I now and what are the things that are important to me now? Okay. The other thing that I want to emphasize, because this is going to be something that you'll notice as a senior when you're filling out applications, whether it's a job application or a college or financial aid, scholarship application, things like that, you're going to notice that there's going to be opportunities to, to share information about who you are, what sets you apart, what makes you different. Um, I saw this in a, in a webinar, so I'm kind of stealing the idea, but I really liked it. Um, so if we, if we said like numerically, the Toyota Corolla is probably one of the most numerically kind of statistically perfect cars out there, okay? It's economical, it's cheap to make, it's cheap to buy, it lasts forever, it gets great gas mileage, there's no major flaws, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's proven itself, right? So it's numerically essentially perfect, okay? But most people don't think about the numerically perfect car when they were like, dreaming about what car they might wanna buy, right? They, they think about the, the more exciting, the more meaningful, cars maybe that that might help them express themselves okay so the the whole point of the analogy is really to, to to say like you know what you might be this numerically perfect student okay which is great we don't want students to like you know not try hard in things or not challenge themselves to to kind of like fit this like different mold of who they might be but when we when we're asking when colleges are asking or employers or financial aid applications are asking questions about who are you I'm hoping that you're thinking about ways that you might be able to express that in a way that's just like I got straight A's right what does that actually mean about you what are the things that uh, you can share with somebody um, 
And, and you could say that the same thing for the opposite student, student who maybe didn't get straight A's. What are the things that like you bring to this table or you bring to this company or college that someone else might not be able to? And it doesn't have to be this like giant like night and day change or things like that. But like think about it from that lens. If you were telling someone about yourself, what are things that you might want them to know about you that's outside of just say your paper, okay, your transcript and the grades that you've done? The other thing that you want to look at is going to be cost and return on investment. Okay, so the end at that the end of public free education is coming up. Okay, it's it's two years away, whether you like it or not. Um, everything that you do in the future will likely cost you some level of money and investment. So you also, when you're thinking about things like college major or potential career paths, you do want to not you know you don't want to ignore the 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 earning potential and things like that. Um, but you want to calculate it on this like, like idea of like the cost and then your return on investment. Okay, am I going to get a re good return on my investment? Um, and that's also a good practice when you're picking a college to attend. They're all going to cost likely different amounts. And so like, is this particular school that's $20,000 a year more really going to return significant dividends on this other one that's maybe $20,000 less a year with the same kind of degree and program. Okay, so those are all big things. We'll have some information, like I said, about financial aid and breaking down more this idea of like, how much does these things cost um, in a future webinar. The last thing I really kind of dive into on the idea of college in particular is this idea of comprehensive review. Because many times, um, when students are thinking about who they are in terms of applications, in terms of interviews, again, for college or even a job interview, many times they think that they're looking at this very, very focused, and if we zoomed in on maybe a very small subsection of the bark of this tree, that's kind of like what we assume many times people are looking at in, say, the world of college admissions. Um, but that very, very zoomed in lens doesn't really give us a whole picture of what the environment looks like for this tree okay we can't maybe can't even tell what type of tree it is but we you know we zoom you know we the college admissions world zooms out and like they, they call it comprehensive review or holistic admissions um, or holistic review and, and really what they're trying to do is zoom out to get the whole picture of what the environment for this tree looks like because that helps gives context you know did this student or tree get struck by lightning <laughs> and maybe that the bark looks fine, but maybe the, the, the tree itself is in shambles and had to overcome this like really challenging environment. Um, and maybe that's the reason why they didn't take five AP classes as a junior, maybe they took two or none. Um, but they had, they had so much resilience in this other way that they demonstrated these characteristics um, differently. Um, so that's a comprehensive review. So I wanna encourage students and families when you're looking at this idea of like, you know, classes about performance, about engagement, going back to this like peak uh, a challenge and under undertaking an effort in junior year, just remember it's not just all about school, which is part of that zoomed in bark, okay? School tests, classes you're taking and grades are usually in that area, okay? Um, but it's a zoomed out picture. And I wanna encourage you to kind of just think about that. Like, you know, if you're a, if you're kind of like a, a, a book whiz and like you really love school and like that's your thing, that's great. But think about other ways that you might be able to either add or express the things that in, that you're engaged in outside of just these kind of mini walls that we're in at school um, to, to kind of make yourself, I want to say make yourself interesting, that's not the, the point, but to express more about who you actually are outside of just academics, okay? And it doesn't mean it can't be not like, it doesn't have to be like non-academic stuff either. It can just be like, this. these are things like, this is what I like to learn about, okay? And this is how I'm doing it outside of school, potentially, and how I'm gonna be using that to maybe get back to my community or different things like that, okay? The only other thing that's really important, we talked a little about kind of like thinking about majors and careers a little bit. Um, We'll be more working more with students on that than kind of families on that primarily. But this idea of being broad, um, again, going back to this, how we're, how we're lensing this, this look at schools and, and next steps, S don't start with this particular like very, very minute thing. Start really broad and then we're gonna narrow that down from there because usually when we start here, it kind of limits our view. Versus if we start out here, there might be a career path over here that looks not that all that different than this career path over here, but like you would never have even looked if you were so focused on this like little bitty point over here. So um, the, the example that I use for that is only 8% of the actual healthcare industry are doctors. Okay, so less than 10% are actually physicians. And 
when I ask students, what do you want to be? They're like, I want to go into healthcare. I want to be a doctor or a surgeon. Okay. Um, I want to go to medical school basically. Um, what they don't realize is there's so like the majority of careers within the healthcare industry are not actually doctors. Okay. And so sometimes they rule out these like other types of jobs and careers that have differing levels of expectations. Um, sometimes I'll have students that are like, they'll go from, Hey, tell me how school is going. Oh, I hate school. Okay. Well, like, let's talk about what you want to do when you grow up. Oh, I want to be a physician. <laughs> and, and so like this, like very, very different dichotomy of what students think are, think are important. Okay. So understanding there's different levels of investment within the healthcare industry, different levels of expertise, different levels of pay, different levels of education or training required after high school. And so finding something that fits within that kind of breadth or career strand or career cluster is actually a pretty important element. Okay. So I, I encourage students to kind of try to think broadly and it's hard because there's many different careers and some of them have names I can't even pronounce. Okay. But it's really, really super important to, to consider those paths that will match your goal, your interest. And again, that level of investment of time or money um, to help you get there. So these are some, it's I'm, I'm probably really hard to see on the screen, but um, these are kind of the 16 career clusters that uh, kind of the different tools that we'll talk about briefly um, kind of use to, to classify types of jobs or types of industries. Okay. And so um, students might have interests that are, you might look in architecture and construction and then look down into energy and you might see a lot of crossover. Okay. But looking more broadly in the sense of like this idea of like agriculture, um, business management and administration, kind of like thinking those clusters over in a big picture is really helpful because you can start narrowing down like, oh, I'm interested. Like, I would like to be a pilot. Okay, what other things could you do? Could, could you um, be a, a air traffic controller? Maybe like that might be another option to consider for yourself as well. Promise we're almost done. Um, like I said, I'm, you know, we're hoping to have these other sessions be, be more condensed. This, these fall workshops are usually a little bit longer just because we're kind of trying to cover a, a lot in a little bit of time um, at, a, at a kind of like a glazed level. Um, and then we can dive into the meat in some follow-up sessions after we have some basic information out of the way. I do want to make a quick note on testing. I mentioned that we're going to have an SAT school day. Testing is many times a question that many junior families have. Should I do it? When can I do it? How do I do it? Okay, we're not going to dive into that super deep today. Um, I do want to point out that testing has significantly changed um, several times in the last couple of years. Um, and so it went from anywhere to you can't submit tests to testing is now back and now it's not back like it's optional test free test required test blind all these different lingos and languages okay essentially what we're talking about when we talk about testing for the most part we're talking about what we would consider like college admissions testing which is usually our sat or the act two sister tests um like they're still largely optional okay meaning students who are like our rock star test takers and like that, that's your jam, probably should take a test. They probably should take the SAT because you know what? They're probably going to do really well. Um, and they're probably going to, it might add some additional benefit or context to their application. However, too often, or not, I won't say too often, that's maybe unfair, but um, more often than I would say I would like to see, uh, I have conversations of, oh, I want to sign up for the SAT. Oh, but I, like, oh, how have you prepared? It's like, no, I hate studying or I hate studying and preparing for tests. Like I'm not a good test taker. I have this like horrible test, like freeze. And like, I'm just, I can't test well. I hate it. If I didn't have to ever test again, I wouldn't. Okay. But I'm going to go do this SAT because I think I need to. I just want to dispel the myth. Like if, if you're not into testing, I just want to point out 59 out of over 3,900 four-year degree granting institutions or one and a half percent of all colleges around the country actually require some sort of admissions test. 59 out of 3,900. And most of those 59 are gonna be the ones that have like 5% admissions rate, okay? Which 95% of students don't actually get into even with a test, <laughs> okay? So I wanna encourage you if, you, if you wanna test, I think there's value to that as well. But I also wanna kind of present the flip side that there, that if that's not you, that's okay. And it might be worthwhile having that conversation with me, with a family, with yourself about 
is this worth my stress, energy, and weekends and money to do this if it's really not my thing? Okay. Um, when we dive into some of these other workshops, I might I'll probably point out some of the different maybe things to think about depending on the level. SAT, ACT is primarily going to be uh, meaningful to the four-year college level. You're not going to see a requirement for SAT, ACT at a junior college, a trade school, technical technical school, or military, or things like that. So it's really a four-year college-specific program. But there's this like mania about testing and freaking out about seats and getting registered and like traveling across the country to go sit for this test. Again, sometimes that's needed, but sometimes I also just want to kind of like encourage you to like sit back and like really think about it. Is this going to be helpful? Is this going to be meaningful and useful for me in my future? And, and is it worth the energy and effort that my family and I might be putting towards it? Or is it realistically not? Um, and it might be okay to just say, you know what, I'm going to apply test optional. Okay. And, and those schools are optional and fully optional for, on purpose, right? Because they know that this test is just one element of who a student is and one way to decipher someone. And realistically, it's representation of like three hours on one Saturday out of their life. Okay, so just, just that's the overview of testing. We'll have some more information to be sent out. Um, typically students in their junior year, if you are gonna test, will usually start in kind of the second half of their junior year, which is kind of when we're starting to plan this like SAT school day. Wrapping up here, um, the tools that I'm gonna highlight here are pretty helpful. During 11th grade, students should definitely start taking a more active and proactive um, kind of approach to kind of like getting this research and plan in order. Uh, junior Pathways, so that's the Laker Pathways class that the students have, is actually a really helpful year. Um, Laura Hartung in particular, but all that uh, Junior Pathways team has really put a lot of time and energy into preparing the curriculum in there. And it will look a lot different, both Junior and Senior Pathways will look a lot different than like our ninth and 10th grade Pathways in many ways, because they really do dive into this idea of life after high school. In 11th grade pathways to develop portfolios and different things like that. So, so I want to encourage you to help your student fully engage in that that course, um, and take advantage of some of the tools and opportunities that they have. One of the very probably biggest powerful resources we have is, is a tool called Score, S C O I R. So it's pronounced Score. Um, it houses things like we have personality tests. You'll use it in pathways. There's career interest inventories. There's pretty powerful college search tools that includes trade schools and technical schools and junior colleges within the, the mixture of diff different opportunities. Um, and, and really some deep dives uh, into like data and information as students start to investigate what schools might fit their needs and wants. Um, the other powerful thing about this tool in particular is it actually has deep levels of data from just our students, whereas many times you're looking at national data for a particular school's admissions rates, which can be helpful. But realistically, the more helpful piece is actually you're being looked at in context of North Tahoe High School. So looking how other students at North Tahoe High School also fared typically provides actually a better preview of maybe what your outcomes could look like. So they actually, we've collected data since 2006 that's included in many of these um, reports and areas that you can actually look at through something called a scattergram and looking at how many students applied, how many students got in, denied, so on and so forth, which can actually give you some deep levels of insight related to college. The other thing, um, you're probably watching it on there right now, but um, the North Tile High School YouTube page, it's not just counseling, but most of it is me. Um, we have a YouTube page or YouTube channel. Um, I would encourage you to subscribe to that. You're getting an update uh, anytime that you publish anything out. Um, some of it may be relevant, some of it might not, but um, that way you don't miss anything. But we have anything from tutorials, there's Aries workshops. Um, another thing that I'm hoping to do over the course of this year for all grade levels is to develop essentially what we would call like little short snippets, which are hopefully like about five or 10 minute little videos. Um, there's one up there right now that we I did at the beginning of the school year about how to understand and read a high school transcript. That's a great that's a great watch because the transcript's an important document and you're a partner in helping understand and make sure that we're not missing something on your transcript that hopefully doesn't impact you down the road. So that's something that you should kind of at least have an inkling of what's on it um, because you sometimes will catch mistakes that have come up um, from time to time. Uh, and then lastly is our, our counseling website. So that's again, underneath the North Tower High School webpage, the programs menu, and then there's a link that says school counseling and that will take you to our website. It's hosted on Weebly. We've spent a lot of time curating and developing it and updating it over the, the course of each year um, with information and resources. There's links to a bunch of stuff, links to our YouTube page, links for appointments, links for um, 
documents that might be helpful in planning for college or um, investigating costs of different college opportunities. So I would encourage you to take a look at that and then dive in. Um, if there's something that you would like to see on the college or the counseling website, please share it with us. We'll try to do our best to kind of like make it as useful as we can. Or if you access it and you're like, that doesn't work. Tell us that too, because sometimes things have like, maybe a link is broken or something like that. Please let us know. We want to try to make it a useful 24 seven, anywhere in the world tool that you can access so that, you know, we're only here from 7.30 to 2.30 every day and we're out in the summer and things like that. But this this website lives in perpetuity um, and you can access it anywhere, anywhere with the internet. So hopefully this is helpful. I, I'm looking forward to this upcoming school year. Um, I, I really like junior year. Junior year is a super fun year. I'm actually really excited that I get a focus primarily on ninth grade and 11th grade. So I also have the ninth grade students. Um, typically in the, in the last few years, I've had juniors and seniors. And so unfortunately due to timeframes and things like that, when I had that caseload, fall was very much senior heavy. And so I had to shuffle some of this information off until the springtime. Um, but I'm actually excited to be able to work primarily with the juniors in the fall time frame um, and, and throughout a little bit more throughout the school year leading up to senior year um, because it, it actually provides a better flow uh, for how the year goes for juniors um, and, and being able to work that caseload this way will actually be very beneficial to us. So if you have any questions, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Like I said, appointments, emails, phone calls, voicemails, <laughs> all that stuff. Remember that. Uh, but I'm looking forward to this school year. I'm, I'm super stoked. Uh, if I haven't met you yet, I'm looking forward to getting to meet you and getting to know you. Um, and I'm super stoked to also be able to follow this year's, you know, the 20, class 2026 throughout graduation uh, and, and taking what we learned last year in 10th grade into this year as an 11th grader and then into next year as we go into 12th grade um, and kind of really having some established, better established relationships and understanding of, of kind of ins and outs of how this class is working. So thank you for hanging in there with me uh, for just under an hour. I appreciate it. And if you have any questions, I'm looking forward to connecting with you here soon.